Hey everyone, this is a follow up from a podcast 11th of February, in which I said, relationships are not meant to be fun. They're not they're not meant to be the place where we're happy. They're not meant to be our salvation. And a, and a listener's written to me saying, what? Why? What? Um, and the listener continues. Um, she says, when I left my first marriage, I could have said exactly what the listener said in your podcast. Um, which was which was this sort of feeling of resentment against the husband. I know I did not do my work then as it was all about him and why I couldn't continue to be in the relationship because of how he was. However, we have three children and so have stayed in touch and actually have a lovely relationship, even though he has not changed in any way that I can see. So I can honestly say I love him, but I would not consider living together again. Okay. So my question is, if relationships are not meant to be fun, why would one ever consider being in a committed one? Why not just do your work with all the other relationships in your life and then have a partner just for fun? As usual, I look forward to and I'm dreading your answer. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, oh, God. Oh, I, I sound like just such a, so ridiculous sometimes. And, but anyway, it's all true. It's all good. Because the point of the previous podcast was that relationships are the place uh, more than any other place in our lives where healing happens and they are the place where projection happens where all our wounds our, our traumas are the the inbuilt beliefs of 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 lack and our insecurity our shame our fears these were formed in relationship primarily with caregivers maybe slightly later with with peers at school maybe later again teachers or um, employers but our our conviction our our subconscious programming of lack and limitation and incompleteness separation is formed in relationship with other people and so it's inevitable that that plays out in future relationships and what happens is we're in a relationship now you know decades later with our husband or our boss or our chill our own children and because everything all reality all belief all thought all um reactions responses behavior beliefs paradigms meaning all of it is coming from the past it 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 overlays onto this current reality and so the relationship with our husband if if there is a sense of separation in that relationship if there is <clears throat> a sense of needing something in this relationship to be complete to be fulfilled we are not in a relationship with this husband we are in a relationship with the past with 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 caregivers with um with people who for for whatever reason maybe against their own will um were not able to give us what we were craving what we needed the stability that we needed and so that's projected onto this husband now or this boss now or these children now and um and so, <laughs> so the listener's saying um why why don't we do all that projection stuff with with other relationships and and just have a normal straightforward fun happy relationship with with the husband or with the with the partner <laughs> because it doesn't is a is a great idea it's a really great idea but it, it doesn't work like that does it it's not there's no uh, <laughs> i love the idea of it but no <laughs> no one we, we don't get to choose that do we it's not um 
it's not the case that there's there's an individual me choosing where to project wounds and like keeping it over here and but then the rest of my life is just um intentionally you know selected as being carefree and easy and, and just a sort of expression of my inner truth it just doesn't work like that the 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 projection the wounds will play out according to the conditioning according to the belief structure this the subconscious program so it might well be that there are areas, and this often, you know, this is really often the case. For, I would say for everyone in in our programs, there are areas in our life that are carefree and are easy, where there isn't there isn't that um, that triggering, there isn't that fight for survival, and that's and that's because these areas have no association really with the identity there's nothing there's nothing in there that has any relevance for me it just doesn't it just doesn't figure it doesn't factor i was talking to someone today beautiful person today who who was really struggling with with um friendships but had an area of her life that was you know, which is which is more of a craft area that was just um, completely easy. And and when we start talking about someone's upbringing in their childhood, their their time at school, it becomes really easy to see why these particular areas of our life are fraught, where there is being this embedded um, these embedded shocks to the system. And where it looks like it starts to look necessary to have this level of attention or, or this level of validation or endorsement in this area, in this area, because that's the that's the transference from from the past here. And there's no one choosing that. But I think. Um, yeah, so, so so where the where this is helping us, what the listener is saying is that. It, it does show us that there are there might well be areas in our life that don't revolve around this loop of trauma that don't look like there is something in here that will eventually secure me that will make me happy that will um, finally control the narrative that's going on in my mind that will make me feel like I belong or um, that I'm accepted that I'm loved. So these areas of our life where that's not happening, that there really are the benchmark of, of sanity, really, aren't they? They're the benchmark of, of flow and ease and, um, and reality, immersion in actual reality. And, and the areas of our life where we are really suffering, where every interaction is this sort of lurch this roller coaster of of survival or or threat survival threat survival threat um those are the areas of our life that are there for healing um and that's why i say relationships aren't meant to be fun when, when we think they're meant to be fun it looks like there's something wrong with the other person they have to be different it looks like there's there's something that I have to be doing differently in order to secure this person's attention and make everything right. They're not meant to be fun because when when all that's playing out is a projection of old wounds, we're not even in a relationship with another person. All that's happening is a mirror back of the the conditioned belief that is running the show in that moment and so it can't be fun it can't be fun because it's we're in fact living out our worst fears they're projected from within and then we resist them and that's and that's our daily life and when we're trying to force that into like we're trying to make it work we miss 
we miss this opportunity for, for genuine healing, for genuine recognition of what's going on. And um, so when we, when we come from the approach, all, all relationships, all situations, all experiences are, are there to show what's really going on. The purpose of life is to discover what is true, what we really are, and to allow wounds to heal, um, then we're onto something. Yeah, so thank you, darling. Great, great question. Lots of love. Bye.